I have found getting involved with the choir um, an emotional pull with regards to the whole aspect of long-term illness that I haven't experienced just by reading the words or talking to an individual. The music, the singing brings an added emotional dimension to it that I hadn't otherwise experienced other than for myself. Now I wanted to start by saying that this is a project about the most complex thing in the known universe and the great thing about that is we've all got one. You've all got one sitting on your shoulders. It's about the human brain. And what stroke tells us about the human brain is really interesting. It's a kind of a learning process that helps us understand who and what we are when certain things happen to our faculties and our ability to function rightly or wrongly in the world. And I also would like to say something about the word stroke. My father had a stroke many, many years ago. And the word always struck me as something soft like stroking. I could never really understand why that word applied to such a devastating condition. So a few months ago, I looked up the etymology, the, the word history behind the word stroke. And you look back to medieval times, and the word is strike. It comes from the word strike. And you'll hear in James's song, who's sitting a few rows back here, who had a stroke seven years ago, he's a, a man's man, a regular bloke, a man's man struck by a stroke. The actual verb, strike, is used about the effect of a stroke because it strikes, and it strikes deeply, and it strikes fundamentally on the nature of who we are. So it's, it's helpful, I think, to think about stroke in those terms. Now, we've got a fabulous chorus here, and you can see they're all wearing red Northern Ireland chest, heart, and stroke T-shirts. And this project simply could not have happened without Northern Ireland chest, heart, and stroke, um, the, Berry, the dairy based arm of that organization, which is what it says on the label. It's an organization for people living with the consequences of chest, heart, and stroke conditions. A number of volunteers from that organization are here, and a number of patients. We, this is what we call a stroke choir. When I raised the question of us having a stroke choir, people said, what do you mean? And I said, this is a stroke choir formed by people who've had stroke or are connected with stroke, either as carers or as volunteers, encouraging them to sing and find voice about a condition that is renowned for the way it silences us, really. Because out here, all among us, there are tens of thousands of people who are kind of living with the consequences of stroke. When one has a stroke, there's, it's all action on the wards of the hospital at the time you have it, with the physios and getting back to normal. But the great travesty of life is that when you get home, a lot of people have to find they have to fend for themselves and make their own lives in totally different circumstances. These 12 songs that you're going to hear today are very much about the life that people lead after stroke, how to rebuild that life and what happened to them. We're going to start with a song called The Ploughboy. Ken, will you put your hand up? Ken is there. This is Ken's song. When we come into the world, we function in the world, we take left and right very much for granted. Um, we see the world out there. You know there's a left side, we know there's a right side, and we navigate it. This is a song about what happens when one of those sides goes wrong. When I first heard about this, the notion that the idea of leftness could vanish was an astounding notion. How can there be no left when the space we have is so understandable in terms of left and right, forwards and backwards? But stroke can affect that radically and fundamentally. Ken was a ploughboy when he was younger, to the age of 14, and he drove these horses, and he described to us how he would shout at these horses, Hoff! Hey, hoff, hey, and this would mean left and right because the horses tended to veer to the left or the right. This is a song about that veering to left and right of the horses when he was a boy of 14, but also when his stroke struck a few years back and he started veering to the left while driving. If you have two horses, mm -hmm. then they have chains on. Yeah. Act the name for them is back ropes. And that's hooked on to what they call a swingle tree. And there's two swingle trees, one for each horse, and then there's a, what they call a swingle tree at the, uh, attached to the plough, and also to those two things that the horses pull it, so they're pulling evenly. But sometimes a horse will still go right or left, and that's where you have to all huff and he. So what does huff and he mean? Left and right. So do they know the meaning of that? Well, usually when you're calling huff, you give the, the rain a wee tug 
And when they get that wee tug, they know they're wrong. Are they obedient? Oh, yes. Well, you see, horses, they, they get on well with one another when they're out ploughing and all. But, you know, you can't put two strange horses to plough together. It won't, it won't work. These horses have to know one another. How do they get to know one another? <clears throat> well, uh, by, like, a taking a ploughing or maybe if you can get them out in the grass fields when they're able to agree out eating grass, things like that. But most, more likely, uh, in harness. They'll get to know all the better in harness. It can be nasty at times to get them to work together, but at the same time, once they take on, they, they will couple up then. That's a very special thing, a horse relating to another horse. It is, it is. How do you know when it's worked? Well, well, they'll keep their back feet with kick, but they'll not kick or bite. You always beware of their, the back foot or biting. Horse will bite. Did you ever get kicked? No, I've got bit, but never got kicked. What's a horse bite like? It can be quite nasty. They'll get you there or the back of the hand, but you usually bang them back, cuff them back. <laughs> they get to know who's boss. Oh, yes, you have to keep on top of them. Seven or eight acre field. And everybody takes a pride in having it right, because if you don't, you know, <laughs> you have a lot to listen to. <laughs> Did you take pride? Oh, I, I loved it. Who was your sternest critic? Oh, the neighbours. The neighbours. <laughs> you see, farming is a funny thing because people that do farming is interested in farming. And one talks to the other. But then you know, all people are banter as well, as you know. And days of old, it's not like now. One farmer hardly knows the other now. But in my day, you helped your neighbour and the neighbour helped you. years and I spent a full month up in the city hospital in Belfast with her. Left side and blurred vision compound his days of grieving.
That's Ken's song. I'd like to be a ploughman, and when my work is done, I'd lead my horses homeward and ride the biggest one. Among the clinking harness, among the clinking chains, I sit astride old Bob and grip him by his reins. <laughs> <laughs> 